Thomas Manton said, wagons are not moved by wind. He also said that ships do not sail by the pulling of horses. This is a wonderful way to look at the spiritual life. Nobody can get close to God by efforts. Charles Spurgeon says, Why do men try to win heaven or the heart of God even with their own merits or their own efforts? The scripture tells us that God takes no pleasure in the legs of man. It is not our efforts or our strivings that grant us anything. It is trust and faith in the perfect merit of Christ. Spurgeon writes, If the means must be adequate to the end, then nothing short of the merits of Jesus can cause a sinner to enter heaven. And I would add that if the means must be adequate to the end, then nothing short of Jesus can bring us into communion with God or bring us near to God. He goes on, Spurgeon says, nothing but the power of the Holy Ghost can make men new creatures in Christ. Nothing but your yielding to the power of God's Spirit will cause you to progress in any way. Any spiritual development whatsoever has nothing to do with your efforts or your strivings. It has to do with the Spirit. Fellowship with the Spirit. Yielding to the Spirit through faith into the experience of God. This is how men grow and increase and have the presence of the Spirit increasing, increasingly taking over their minds, the way they think, the way that they see life, their value system, and all this. So Spurgeon ends by saying this, next time we hear a man try to convert people or bring people into fellowship with God by mere language, we shall remember Thomas Manton's saying, wagons are not moved by wind. I find in my own life that it is so important to be free and recognize the liberty and wonderful rest there is in just fellowshipping with God. Just enjoy fellowship with God. It's the key. And from here, we receive life and life works in and out. That is genuine spirituality. That is genuine Christianity. If it's getting heavy and it's getting wearisome, it is because something has been added to the enjoyment of fellowship with God. And if your time alone with the Lord is not the enjoyment of God, there's a major issue. God is not responsible for an inconsistent experience of Him. Better to just throw everything down at the feet of Jesus and say, here I am. I need you to need you. I will, I, I will need you to want you. I need you to love you. How can a stone rise, Lord? Oh, raise me. It is this that is so important because it keeps us. The other day I was in prayer and when the presence of the Lord started to really be sensed by me, it was like a light came on and I was able to see. And what I saw was things in my heart. I was expecting God to do certain things in my life. I was assuming that God would do certain things in my life. And I was connected to this, these expectations and assumptions. And in that, I found that my faith was no longer naked. It was clothed with expectations and clothed with assumptions and clothed with desires and all these things. What am I saying? I'm saying naked worship, naked trust. I come to you for you before you do anything and even without you doing something. I come to you because you are worthy. You are the one 
who deserves worship, whether or not anything happens in my favor or if I receive the things that I'm assuming you're going to do. All of those things to a far second, bringing them low and saying, Lord, you are worthy of my worship. You're worthy of my surrender. You're worthy of everything. Even if, even if things do not go the way that I think they are going to go or the way I think they should go, that has no bearing on whether or not you are worthy. So I worship you and I praise you and I give you glory, Lord. And I thank you for every person watching this video right now. I ask you that you would bring us to naked worship, worship clothed with nothing other than how much you deserve to be loved in your precious name, in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really helps me if you like the video and if you comment something, even if you just say, praise God, um, it really helps uh, my channel a lot. If you could subscribe, that would help us out a lot, a lot too. But the major thing that helps us is when you become a patron. A patron is someone who has decided to help us with $1 every month. It's 25 cents a week. And uh, it really just it enables us to be able to continue doing this. And we give to our patrons uh, special updates and special videos um, every few days just to thank them and to give them a little short teaching that helps them in their daily life experience the presence of the Lord. So love you guys. I am praying for all of my subscribers. When I'm in my chair, I pray, oh Lord, these things that you're showing me, I pray them for my subscribers and I pray them specifically for my Patreons, those that have chosen to value our ministry enough to help us uh, continue doing this. God bless you guys.